Hey. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Hey, listen. Last episode was 60. This is 61. No big deal. Yeah, it's like uh, your 61st birthday. Yeah, this is a lot less pressure. You didn't have to do the fun trip to Vegas and pretend you could still drink because you were 60. This is just, we're actually out on the porch with our friends, just the friends you still like. Yeah, just the three of you. (laughs) Yeah, if you're 60, remember, there ain't that many. Having some uh, white wine with an ice cube in it. That's absolutely right. And are you enjoying yourself? Enough. Enough, but you'll be so relieved when they finally leave. Yeah. And you can watch Yellowstone. (laughs) <laughs> yes you're gonna watch yellowstone and it's episode 61 of alex and jim analyze billy joel lyrics Joel lyrics and um it's a non-milestone which is nice yeah yeah and we did a thing i mean we've been going through uh one album but we decided to take a break from it which was a good, it's a good break to take <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to look at the song, A Room of Our Own. Lordy, what a fun song. And unlike last week's song, I think we like this one, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like last week, I think Billy Joel likes this song. Yeah. I feel like this one is uh, the rare B side that he probably still plays. It's a fun tune. Fun I think it, uh, it accomplishes what the song sets out to do. The musical break in the middle is not an absolute departure which is nope. nice it's still yeah. the song it's still the yes it is not a snippet that he couldn't figure out yeah it it does oh. this yeah it does this, it does a little you're you're frozen by the way just for a second i'm probably frozen too are we both frozen i'm frozen there we can go. you hear me now i can hear yeah everything's back i'm back I'm doing stuff. Am I doing stuff? You're doing stuff now. Great stuff. I like this stuff. <laughs> I'm being told my inter- internet connection is unstable. Yeah. As, as, am I, as am I, really. You know, but I'm doing my best. I'm 60. At 61. Yeah, 61. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to make a couple side notes. And I know usually we get right into it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me a story. You know who's a real delight on Twitter? Who's that? Lorraine Newman. Oh, really? I yeah nothing like she's funny i'm not saying that but nothing that you'd go oh my god can you believe what lorraine newman said today no just her being a nice lady funny charming and fine and uh nothing you have to follow which is right. really nice it's just every now and then she'll say something and it pops up in my feed and it's always the thing where you go I'm glad she survived the 70s. Yeah. Just a nice lady. Who's know this? Her daughter is an actor. Oh, yes. Uh, Hannah Einbinder. Oh, okay. Did not know that. That's right, right? The lead. I'm checking with the producer, but I think yes. The lead on what show? Because you froze. On Hacks. Oh, great. Yeah. Good. Good so, for her. Good for everyone involved. And uh, here's my favorite Better Call Saul thing that's going on right now. I watched the episode last night, and the, today on Twitter is just a lot of people making fun of the flashback, how Jesse's now kind of fat. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, there's been talk that the two of them were going to show up in an episode. And, you know, I have been joking around, like, how dark is the set going to have to be for them to look young? And then they showed up. It really was like they were lit by one Christmas bulb. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) They picked the best thing they could have done, which is they put him. And this is not a spoiler because the scene they were in, of course, took place on the old show. So it just gave new context, I guess. Yeah. But they lit the inside of a van or a or a, mo- a mobile home, the mobile home. Yeah. And uh, that's all they did. They went, this is the actual lighting you'd have at night. None. <laughs> yeah. I think they were like, we got to bring them back for a scene. What should we do? <laughs> well, yeah. remember that scene where it was dark? Right. <laughs> we'll do the other half of that scene. 
You know what they could have done? They could have just had the episode where Jesse had just been beat up by Hank and just bruise him up. <laughs> True. It has been the one episode they could have done. Jesse Pinkman, another character that wasn't supposed to survive. Yes, and he was saved by the writer strike, right? I think, and also by, like, they liked him. Yeah. Uh, he's really good, and this dynamic is great. My recollection is that had the writer strike not happened, they wouldn't have had the time to reassess, and he just would have been gone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Finally, yeah. Some good news comes out of the writer strike. The cycles. Yeah, well, I think that's what the whole strike was about, right? Was whether or not Aaron Paul was coming back. <laughs> uh, so everybody got what they wanted and yeah. hooray. <laughs> Solidarity. Yeah, I, I remember. remember. And I had so many friends at the time who had jobs that disappeared because of that strike. Oh, yeah. That's fun. <laughs> it's less fun, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of friends uh, whose jobs disappeared in the last two weeks. Oh, yeah. Not related to strikes. Yeah. Is that the Warner Brothers thing? It's the, uh, yeah, the, the Sam B thing. Oh, right. Yeah, Samantha B got the axe, and yeah. that's a shame. It is a shame. On a number of levels, because I thought... I at first I liked that show, but I legitimately thought that the, that show was like, if you like that kind of show, it had a legitimately its own point of view. Yes. Yeah. And so many of the shows have their own point of view, kind of, but they all kind of have a bleed into each other kind of point of view. Whereas Samantha B is definitely her own um, hilarious rage monster. You know <laughs> yes yeah yeah i hope that the she i'm she'll land somewhere but i hope those good people also do yeah absolutely yeah that was a funny old show and and again like i said it was different enough yeah i'm not sure why they pulled the plug and, and had something to do i think with the merger ah uh, yeah new people came in and were like hey this show isn't rating well yeah um actually are there there's still other reasons to do shows right there should be what, what do we get like a five share with this show yeah about a five yeah you're right and we say still... yeah exactly but you know you could envision a scenario where we would just do this for the love of it i could imagine that yeah yeah so then why why would should we be allowed to do that yeah and you would think so yeah samantha yeah Oh, well, <laughs> she'll do something else and it'll be equally, if not better. So that'll be good. But yeah, that sucks. HBO or Showtime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it is possible the show itself will get root. Yeah. You freeze every now and again. Do I have to keep, if I keep doing this, will that prevent it? Even if it doesn't, you should. <laughs> It's a good viewing experience, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. <laughs> so the last week's song was missing so much to be liked. It had yes. terrible lyrics. The music was not great. No. Nope. Um, it was... Very sung, dated. Very dated. It, was, it wasn't mixed well. It was pathetic, too. And yes. And it was all unintentional, too. You could tell that in the lyrics, that everything was, nobody was trying to do anything on purpose. <laughs> right. Yeah, they weren't trying to be pathetic. Yeah. And this song, when we get to a particular lyric, there's a thing I looked at and I went, oh, he does a thing on purpose. <laughs> yeah. There's a thing in the lyrics that I really like because there's a thing in the lyrics I like because it's clearly an artistic choice and it works. The best. Yes. So now we're going to try an experiment. Last week I started. I'm going to have you start with the hope that you don't freeze while you're talking. <laughs> okay. That's a good experiment. <laughs> so this is a room of our own. A room of our own. 1982. The, uh, yeah, the Nylon Curtain LP. It is. 
Uh, ah, see, I still got it. You did it. Uh, a one, two, <laughs> a one, two, three, four. <laughs> you got diamonds and I got spades. You got pills and I got razor blades. You got yoga, honey. I got beer. You got overpriced and I got weird. Hmm. Delightful. Yes. Right away, here's something I really liked that didn't hit me until I was actually in the mindset of let's analyze this. I like you've got yoga, I've got beer because the lyrics tell you that whatever you might want to say about yoga, I see that as just one of your other obsessive vices. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. Yes. And I think that's fantastic because a lot of things are like that. I like a buddy of mine does CrossFit. He used to be uh, an alcoholic. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he's still an alcoholic. It's just not alcohol and that's fine. Right. This is the white knuckling. Yeah. The way he does CrossFit is as a guy who's like, yeah, I'm not going to have knees when I'm 80. They're going to be gone. Right. And then, yeah, I'll be super into wheelchair basketball. <laughs> something. Yep. Yeah. I've known a few super intense yoga people. Yeah. And, and if you get talking to them a little bit, you always find out that they used to be a Coke addict or they used to, uh, you know, follow fish all over the world and not yeah. have, that. they always. Yeah it seems like you're relaxed <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I the other thing you always know with the great people are just so into yoga and really into smoking just <laughs> got those things lock uh, and that which like dancers too like some of the fittest people you'll ever meet you watch oh, a yeah. professional dancer and then the amount of times when they're done dancing and they go have a fucking giant smoke break or whatever other yep. thing and you're like joke yep and you can we can all kid ourselves and we're like yeah we're all obsessed about something we're all in fact the thing that probably makes you great at fitness also makes you likely to have these other addictions yeah it's that supernatural focus yeah the ability to uh shut out other all the options available to you <laughs> uh, it starts as very repetitive uh format in the song that exists in other songs but in most other songs it turns into like uh, the men are from Mars, women are for, from Venus kind of thing. Or like, oh, you like uh, opera and I like rock and roll. Uh, and it's like lady thing, man thing, lady thing, man thing. <laughs> and this yeah. is really like two more fully developed characters. Yeah. And he's talking about, I mean, it's not that, you know, she's got, I'm assuming she. Fair. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she's got pills. Yeah. And he likes apparently cocaine. Yes. So it's not like, you know, those could, those are unisex. I yeah. Guess one yeah. Thing. Those are unisex hobbies. Yeah. And I do like that the song is about two messes of human beings, but yeah. who are in this moment, not quite leaving Las Vegas style, but in this moment, accepting the other person fine we're both trash they're like late 20s early 30s kind of messy people yep absolutely like the scene we all did yeah and he's not he's not saying i'm better than you for the razor blades <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah no it's just uh, you got your stuff i got my stuff yeah and uh and we'll uh, let me read that chorus because the chorus works really well too, which it doesn't always in any number of song. True. But it's all right, we're the same even though we're alone. 
It's all right. Yes, we all need a room of our own. I like that a lot. We're the same, even though we're alone. Yeah. And that's, uh, man, we're, the, we're alone. That just feels like it's just a statement about everyone. Yeah. Ultimately, all, you're alone. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, you're in your own dumb head and you got your own dumb problems. And, man... Isn't, could that not be any truer? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, in my is... mind, and I know a lot of people don't agree, all right is two words. Yeah. I think. Oh! That's about it. Yeah. That made me want to ask you another grammar question I forgot to ask you. <laughs> Because uh, I'm uh, I'm not sure of the answer. The name of the song is A Room of Our Own. Yes. If you were to put it in a list for somebody to find alphabetically, should it be an R or A? Ooh. I think it depends on the list. Is it a list of Billy Joel songs? Is it a list of every song in the world? You would, it varies. Okay, so, so every song in the world, you put it under R because, A, yeah. there's going to be too many damn songs? Probably too many damn songs that start with A room. Yeah. Um, but still, yeah, I think you would do room of our own, comma, A. And if it's a list of Billy Joel songs, you think you start it with A. It's not a hard and fast rule. Okay. Yeah. We're voting, right? Just yeah. <laughs> I think, I, um, yeah. I think when you make a list like that, you have to consider how people will search it. Yeah. And I think how people search a list changes depending on where the list is and what it is used for. Yeah. So I will say that the way I searched it, I had to go back and do it again. Because <laughs> okay. I, look, I looked under room of our own. Sure. And then I was like, oh, so I guess it's a room of our own is how they want me to look for it. <laughs> I didn't find it initially because I thought the song was called Room of Our Own. Which maybe it could be. Yeah. Um, but, but it's apparently a room of our own. A room of our own. Well, yeah, that is well, more accurate. <laughs> All right. Now. <laughs> Now, I like this next set of lyrics, um, and I'll, I'm going to slow it down. Now, now I'm going to slow it down for you, babies. Uh, <laughs> but you've got love, darling. I've got sex. Going back to what I like about the song of, of it all being vices, yeah. I like that a lot. You've got love. I've got sex. At the end of the day, the vice quality of those two things can be exactly the same especially That's if you're obsessive true. about it yes both are subject to addiction yeah love bombing is a thing and then like getting all into your like over way into your dumb feelings and stuff love can be this wonderful thing but it can also just be just a thing it cannot be real too which is what i like about this Right. It can be this thing that you're using to cover up the real problem. Right. Or just to never see that there is a real problem. I like that lyric a lot. You could just be using it to get out of uh, CrossFit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> By the way, my friend does that too. Uh, he, he's uh, a, And of course, he's really good looking because of the CrossFit. So he has options. <laughs> it's very very funny he's a good dude but he's very he's intense like yeah. when i have dinner with him i'm and i enjoy his company i'm like it was really nice seeing him let's hope that doesn't happen for two months <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're shaking by the end he's just he's just much yeah. and he and he always looks at you <laughs> he's one of those guys <laughs> you know he makes a yeah. lot of eye contact oh yeah oh i know him I have yeah. those friends. Yeah. Where you're like, okay, you're a once a month friend. Yeah. I feel, I feel like he's like, he's a German shepherd 
and I'm a, a, at dinner with a chihuahua who doesn't want to be looked at. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Just laser focused. And cool. that's nice for a little while. Right. And I got to stress, by the way, he's a wonderful person. It's just, he's a lot. Yeah. Um, I think they know those people. I, he's got to. I'm just glad he doesn't play acoustic guitar because then I'd hate him. I would absolutely hate him if he played acoustic guitar. You've got love, darling. I've got sex. You've got cash, mama, and I've got checks. <laughs> I, wh what do you think of that, Larry? Because all I know is, um, is it that he doesn't have money? Is he saying, is this character doesn't have money, but he's overextended and writing bad checks? <laughs> I think it maybe is just... Um... Just there for the rhyme. Yeah. I think there's a good chance of that. Although I want to note the inclusion of mama <laughs> as a fantastic 70s rock word. I know we're in the <laughs> 80s here, but God damn it, I love it when mama comes in. Yeah. Uh, that's when you know you're really rocking. It's weird that you, you like mama when it comes into um, a lyric, not yeah. so much when she's on the phone. Yeah, no, no, no. There's a place, time and a place for Mama. <laughs> At a distance, I believe, is the place, right? <laughs> Lord, that's not bad joke-wise. Um, you still moving? What's that? Uh, there you are. You're moving again. Good. Oh, yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> oh, I forgot. My arms got tired. Oh. <laughs> I conduct uh, Wi-Fi through my fingertips. Oh, that's your, yeah. You're a great conductor, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, all right, so I believe you're up with the next lyric. Um, oh, I, you only got halfway through that. Oh okay. wait, okay, maybe I had another. Hold on, let me go back. Yeah, you're right. Cause okay, uh, where the hell was I? Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, you've got business, baby. I've got the kids. Uh oh, they've got pills and kids. <laughs> You got crowded just the way I did. I like that line. You got crowded just the way I did. You both of them have a like, Ugh, I need to get away. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah, I think we're maybe getting down to the, the point of the song now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> our... Oh. All right. Say that again. Say it again. I, I, okay. Mm, I feel like they're a couple who are uh, feeling the stresses of being in a couple and having kids and pills. Yeah. And uh, they need some space. This is an I need some space song. Yeah. What a great thing. That's because tr it's true. <laughs> and uh, what a wonderful way to express it because it's not in a it's very not Billy Joel in a lot of ways because it's not judgmental. No, he literally is saying over and over again, it's all right. Yeah. Which is not very like him. Yeah, it's a recognition that we, I, you need time away from me, I need time away from you. And that in and of itself is not a problem. Right. He's acknowledging even that he crowded her. Yeah. And she probably needs some space and that's okay. I, that's all right. Two words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cause we all need a place to call home. It's all right. Yes, we need a room of our own and you're damn right, man. And that's good lyric writing because he starts out setting the table, telling us about how we both got our things and then it drills down into the point. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And, uh, is this the point where it starts to do that little trucking along change of tempo? <laughs> Yeah, the chug, chug, chug. Yeah, and it works musically it works. and lyrically. It works really great. Yeah. In fact, this is the bridge is sort of where the thesis comes into play. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, this works really well. Even just thinking about it lyrically, you're like, damn, this might be, I don't know. It's up there as far as a well-written, produced, perfect song. Yeah. And I want to go back to the first stanza, speaking of him not not doing his typical lecturing, he's admitting that he got weird. Yeah, you're right. 
you got overpriced, which is a weird thing to say to somebody. <laughs> but I think he just means like this all got expensive. Yeah. Um, and I got weird. And yeah. That's all. And let me say this to your point about you got overpriced being an odd lyric. It's odd, but not in that, you know, that doesn't quite work way. It's odd in the like, oh, wow, that's really an interesting poetic way to say something. Yeah. It's not, you've heard, yeah, you've definitely heard like women referred to as expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or they like champagne. It's just overpriced. It's a very blue collar way to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty dope, actually. Uh, all right. You want to take it from uh, I Can Still? Yeah. So the bridge. I can still remember packed together like a can of sardines. Huh? No, no, no. Pushing, shoving. That's when loving starts to come apart at the seams. Oh, no, no, no. Great. Yeah. Um, I, the push and shove and that's when loving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. It really also, is. It's another great 70s song word is loving. <laughs> uh, uh, mama and, and Sue and I have an unofficial list going of great 70s song words. Yeah. Lovin' is definitely on the list. Mama is definitely on the list. And um, we also noticed there's a cup of wine shows up a lot. <laughs> Not a glass of wine. There's a, a cup of wine. Right, right. Oh, the best. Yeah, yeah, and I think if you see somebody with a cup of wine now, you just go, oh, alcoholic, sweet. Yeah, oh, man, the, I knew one serious alcoholic in my life and whenever i came to her house she would serve me red wine in a coffee cup <laughs> and i was like oh huh that's funny because you know what that means too coffee cup means you're used to hiding your drinking yeah so, so much so that now that's become your default you've stopped hiding the drinking but you still use the cup yeah and also anything with a thin stem on it you broke yours yeah i was gonna say exactly that yep yeah. you broke um, forgot about and cut your foot on it yeah <laughs> coffee cup survived because they have that wide base yeah the handle might be it might be the little half handle yeah <laughs> but it'll still hold wine and it'll be like a thrift store coffee cup <laughs> like a company that nobody worked for <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. WorldCom. WorldCom Summer Fair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God bless. Um, packed together like a can of sardines. Pretty cliche, but yeah. it works, and works anyway. Yep, it works. Money. I don't need... This song doesn't say like, hey, you're going to hear some real poetry. Yeah. Nope, you're gonna hear some blue collar stuff and a couple of cliches and some weird unexpected kindness yep and and a few good lyrical surprises but you're right some empathy is in this song yeah and it's and musically it's very light yeah it's sort of like oh great this song is on and if you don't listen to the divorce happening <laughs> yeah it's pretty peppy yeah, and I think I've said this before. I love songs that do that. I like, I like a peppy, fast-paced, sad song. I always have. Yeah. I just think they're neat. Yeah, um, I have always loved "Born in the USA" for that reason. Yeah, I don't know how peppy it is, but it's upbeat. It is uh, takes you a second listen before you're like, "Hey, wait a minute," <laughs> he doesn't like it here. <laughs> yeah, I there was a the boss did a concert where he Bruce Springsteen the, yeah the Bruce Bruce Springsteen yeah sure. I don't know if Bruno Mars knows <laughs> sure. uh, where he did a you know one of those stripped down shows yeah. where you do a lot of acoustic and stuff and he did born in the USA but oh. just kind of gritty and I'm like no that's fine that you did this but <clears throat> excuse me no no worries 
part of the song is that it doesn't match and so i wasn't like in love with the stripped oh, yeah. down version it was fine i'm sure had i been there live i would have thought it was the greatest thing in the world but it was just more it felt indulgent to me at that point we're like yeah there's a yeah that weird uh irony of, like stripping down a song makes it less humble somehow yeah yeah sting did a tour where he did a bunch of jazz versions of stuff from his early albums and i'm like it's no it's everything that can be wrong with sting <laughs> yeah and well, i like sting but there's a lot that can sometimes go wrong in his head yeah i feel like he, yeah, he does a lot of yoga yeah <laughs> yes he does that kind where it's a problem yeah yeah. And, well, the great thing about Sting was the early stuff was rock and roll that had like jazz infused in it. So then to take out the rock and roll, it's like, yeah. oh no, the the hybrid was the point. Yep. The hybrid was why it was great. I will say too, and I'm going to go on record as saying this. I think this is official. Yeah. Is, yeah. On um, record. He did. He had wrote some fine lyrics throughout his career. Some very good lyrics. I say overall, Billy Joel's a better lyricist because Billy Joel never indulged in as much nonsense. <laughs> Controversial. Yeah. But I like it. Yeah. Because just thinking about it, the blue collar thing. Yeah. But Billy Joel was, there's a point at which you take a lyric and you get so obtuse that I'm like, okay, well, so you're just doing this because you want me to not know what's going on. Right. You are showing off for me the fancy uh, things you can do. Yeah. Somebody uh, very funnily tweeted about Bruce Springsteen uh, <laughs> that the only people who can afford the tickets now are the villains in Bruce Springsteen songs. <laughs> it was pretty great. That's very funny and very true. Well, it's. I think one of the greatest things that ever happened was when Chris Christie found out that Bruce Springsteen doesn't like him. <laughs> it's really great. Uh, All right, where were we? Uh, you, uh, Add sardines. Yeah, but we go wrong at times. Oh, wait, no, yeah. Uh, that's when loving... Uh, and then, is it's still you, right? Um, it can be, if you like. Or, it can, well, what do you prefer? Let's do me. Okay, go ahead. You got the day shifts. And I got nights. We go wrong at times, but we got rights. That's fantastic. Yeah, it really is. Again, to say what Billy Joel doesn't do very often lyrically is he creates room for the other character to not be, they're not wrong. He's not preaching at them. No. Nope. He's not saying they did it to him. He doesn't say I've got rights. He says we've got rights. Yeah. And it's a nice uh, double meaning on rights. Yeah. Um, I also like that now we're, he's been general about the things that they have up till now. Now I feel like we're in their house. Yep. Where it's like, okay, you've got the day shifts. I've got nights. We go wrong at times, but we got rights. You got TV shows. I've got crime. <laughs> you got your room, honey. I got mine. What does he mean by I've got crime? I don't know that. I'm not quite unlocked that. I think it's that he's, uh, not, I don't think he's doing crime. Yeah, it's, I don't. It's me. Yeah, if you're doing the one for one, TV shows is what she does with her time. That's her hobby, sort of. Right. She's interested in crime stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that can... Yeah, the only thing I could other suss out is that makes more sense. I was like, is it you've got TV shows? No, I'm still doing that razor blade thing. I'm really into cooking. <laughs> I mean, he's got, what does he have? Razor blades, beer, sex. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I like this because now I think room changes, but you've got your room, honey, and I've got mine. I think that, I think you're right. We're in a house and 
He's sleeping over here. She's sleeping over there. They're at that point. Right. And yeah. that's pretty cool because we were talking about rooms in the hypothetical sense of like, we all need a general place to be. We all, you know, but no, he means, yeah, now I'm, I'm living in my office. I'm sleeping in my office now. Yeah. Which is a great, uh, very true thing that a, a lot of people end up doing that doesn't get songs. But, you know, there's a lot of songs about leaving. I'm leaving. I'm moving out. I think uh, Billy Joel has a song about that. Yeah, I believe he does. <laughs> but um, you don't hear any songs about the phenomenon of like, we're not in a relationship really anymore. But for financial reasons or whatever, we still are sharing the house. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people who are like, oh, my, I still live with my ex-wife or her boyfriend lives with us. You know, it's like, yeah. It's messy. Yeah. But uh, it feels very real. And it shows that there's an, there's an alternative to the perfect versus the absolute break. There's the like, we like each other fine and we can do this because yeah, there's not like absolute vitriol. There's not that. It's just that some aspects not working. And that's a yeah. very mature thing to put in the song, I think. They're sort of cracking under the pressure. Yeah. You know, I um, I just had a, a flash that this could be like a a cut in to the the Brenda and Eddie story. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Brenda and Eddie? Yeah, that's right. What broke them up? I can't remember the line. Um, money got tight. They just didn't count on the tears. And they just didn't count on the tears. Yeah. 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 And we all, and everybody knew that early on, which is, I find that I like that part of the song. We're like, yeah. it's like, can't get to work because Brenda, you're much too lazy. Yep. Eddie, you're broke. <laughs> yep. I like that too. And I like that that's what her friends grokked on to is, you know, the thing about Brenda is she ain't going to try hard. It's lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I like this, by the way, I'll take, I'll go here because the, the chorus is back, but it's different. Yes. It's all right. It's the one thing that we should have known. Yes, it's all right. Yes, we all need a room of our own. And I like the, so I like that we're saying, I realized this, but I should have known. I should have known that, you know, we need, you know, we the signs were there early on that we were going to need room and space. Yeah. What and am I also should know going into any relationship? If you're living together, you're going to need a place to be. Yeah. Now and then a buddy of mine, uh, uh, he, uh, every single relationship he's had that ended, this was the issue was he, him needing more space then sometimes your partner is willing to give you. Yes. And I've always said to him, cause I believe it. I'm like, I'm not saying none of it's your fault, but I am <laughs> going to say that it isn't your fault for needing more room. The no. thing you could probably be better about is picking partners or ending it sooner. So you can move on to something that works. Or also probably, uh, being clear that you need that. Yeah, because I think a lot of people are like, I need more space, but they don't tell the partner. Yeah, would happily provide it if they knew that it was bothering you. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, sometimes that sometimes not that I, I knew this guy who I knew a guy who said over and over, I never want to have kids. And he made yeah. a point of saying that to anyone he dated. And then he met a woman, they got engaged. And it was like, just no, I don't ever want to have kids. And moving close to the wedding, she go. She started talking about when they were going to have kids. And he had said it over and over, and he was like, "No, I wasn't joking." And they, he broke up the wedding, and I was like, "Well, in this case, that was her fault. It really was." Yeah, he uh, had been warned. Yeah, you. She believed a thing that well, you'll want them eventually, which a lot of people believe, but. I just can't imagine somebody not wanting kids. I'm like, yeah. eh. 
You don't have to imagine anymore. I'm here. Yep. And I don't want them. And you've seen kids, right? You can't imagine not wanting one of those, huh? Huh. Have you touched one? They're sticky. You, uh, you have a poor imagination. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll demo it for you. Ugh. <laughs> And it's all right. Yes, we all need a place to call home. It's all right. It's all right to have a room of our own. No, no, no. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right, Mama. Mama's <laughs> right. To have a room of your own. Sometimes you've got to get away. Got to get away. Got to get away. Got to get away to a room of your own. Got to have a room. Got to have a little elbow room of my own. Well, there's your cliche back. Can of sardines, elbow room. <laughs> yeah but it, um, it doesn't it's a, overstay its welcome either nope and i'd like that it's uh that sort of blues thing of restructuring and there's some shouting at the end yep um this, i don't feel like he does this a ton pretty structured with lyrics usually yeah this really feels like maybe just going off in a blues club yep fucking uh, if you, uh, I don't know if you're a Hall & Oates fan. I like Hall & Oates. Um, almost every song ends with some version of the music, it, like the song getting quieter and quieter, and Daryl Hall doing all kinds of loop-de-loops, versions of the lyrics. Yeah. Um, similar endings to this. Yeah. Um, and they are my only reference for the blues. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's cool, too, is we talk about this a lot, is Billy Joel doing a song that's in the style of, inspired by, or whatever. Yeah. But this one, in a general sense, feels like Billy Joel likes the blues. Billy Joel likes rhythm and percussion and all that. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like cultural appropriation. It doesn't feel like... He's yeah. trying to sound like anyone. It just feels like he kind of nailed this song. Yeah. And it feels like I could hear like Ray Charles doing this song. Sure. But it doesn't sound like oh, I'm going to write a Ray Charles song the way like Baby Grand does. Yeah. Um, it's just like, yeah, I could hear like a number of different people sing this song. Yeah. Uh, and it would still work. Yeah. Bruno Mars, for example. Oh, look into it. Could he he did an album of Billy Joel covers. Oh, my God. I don't know how to tell you how rich he would be. Dude, it, I would really enjoy that album because it would be the Bruno Mars flash put onto Billy Joel songs. It would be really fun to hear. Play with my glasses while you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you you just froze while playing with your glasses. Look, this is Time Warner. Yeah. Rainer. Time Warner Internet. <laughs> well, you know, one of our, uh, one of the things our show is known for is different challenges in getting through listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> if it was, if we made it easy, then everybody would watch it. Yeah, exactly. And who would want that? <laughs> <laughs> We only want the people who really want the content. I really enjoyed last, uh, why Judy, why I, uh, the, <laughs> the clip at the end, by the the clip at the end was I put a, a Judy Dench clip. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> it's her singing. Cause I didn't, I forgot Judy Dench sang. I forgot. What did she sing? I forget. <laughs> But it's some Broadway song. It was probably like on a Sondheim tribute or something. Uh, it was nice. She's uh, a multi We don't do this, but what would you give this song raid wise? Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm asking you to put your money where your mouth is. Honestly, uh, a solid. A solid A minus. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. A minus. It's all there. Yeah. It does. Uh, it's not a hit. Mm-mm. But it it shouldn't be. 
No, but it, it you're right. It's a song that is not a hit, but then when you hear it after having listened to a couple hits or whatever, because you're just listening to music and it pops up, you're like, damn, that's pretty nice and it's enjoyable. It doesn't feel like you have to be a fanatic fan to enjoy it. No. No. Um, it's one of those that you would hear pop up somewhere. Yeah. And um, nobody would know it was visual. Yeah. This, now, this is us should have commissioned this song. Not Judy. Still be on the air if they'd done that. Yep. And I get it. It's not a bummer. You can't set fire to the house with the dog in it with this song, but <laughs> that show, that show's funny because that show was just like really leaned into like, ah, it's important to, uh, to show people that these people's families are being brutalized by life. Yeah. That's and it was everyone's favorite show. Yep. For a second, right? For a second, it was everyone's, but it always did well, I think. Yeah. They just, Very yeah. They leaned into their hook. Yeah, that is what you got to do when yeah. there are five million shows on TV. Yeah. Can't, for my money, you can't afford to have a Christmas episode. No, fucking, you do what you do. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Why does everyone have to have a Christmas episode? Yeah. Is it to raise awareness? <laughs> That's right, because, yeah, Christmas is, yeah. I like the shows that do a Halloween episode because it's always because somebody in the writer's room actually likes Halloween. Yeah. And there's stuff to do. It's more fun. There's costumes. Yeah. I don't want to see a fucking TV character's fucking grandparents. Yeah. You know what would be good on any show? And listen, any show that's watching, you can just do this. <laughs> yeah. Is uh, a show where at some point in the episode, somebody says, hey, isn't tomorrow Christmas? And they go, oh, yeah. And I didn't really think about it this year. I didn't really. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, it's uh, December. How about that? Yeah. And then have viewers go, oh, that's a bummer. And But that's it. But then the rest of the show is, like you said, it's people getting burned alive by crock pots, if that's your show. If that's your show. Yeah. Or make some meth, if that's your show. Yeah. They should do a prequel about that crock pot. Oh, yeah. You know, see what, <laughs> you know, see what else happened with that crock pot. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gracious. Hey, speaking of Christmas. Oh. Speaking yeah. of Christmas. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wow. If it isn't uh, Timmy. Now, you've got... Where's my finger? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, you yeah, got... Uh, is, is his name... Oh, it's Freddy. Is his name Freddy? Uh, Santa. You thinking of Santa? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> Fred, Fred Santa. Yeah, that's right. So uh, there's a bunch of toys there. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of Christmas toys. They're uh, claymation. Right. Oh, how would you describe those toys, those specific toys? Uh, well, they're Christmas toys. Oh, did you ever watch this special, I hope? I did. It's been a while, and I'm trying to remember what it was even called. Yeah, well, that's, well it's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, yeah, okay, sure. And those toys had a particular problem. Ah, uh, were they misfits? They were, they were. Yeah. But those guys aren't all misfits. I mean, look at that guy in the back in the blue. I wouldn't call him a misfit. Oh. Uh, or he, uh, a huh? He's a plumber or something? Well, I'll tell you one thing. He challenges societal norms. <laughs> He's a gay plumber? <laughs> he might be, but he does challenge, he challenges what, you know what, he's not going to just be held back by what you expect of him. Oh, he's his own man. Yeah, he's bucking he's a, society. A rebel. Yes, he is. He's a rebel. He's a rebel, and he'll never, ever be any good. Yep, and he's a rebel. Yep, that's the song. <laughs> he, he's a rebel, and they're misfits. Yep. He's a rebel. He's uh 
He's an angry young man. Well, he's a rebel. They're misfits, and where would he, where would you want to showcase him? <laughs> I mean, he's he's taller than everybody else. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? I'm just telling you, physically, he's bigger than the other guys. Hey, big old rebel. Yeah, and they're misfits. Among the misfits. So where would he be big? You uh, might have said it. Hold on. Oh, uh, like I'm not. I'm having one of my famous uh, blanks. Oh, okay. Well, I bet on one particular street he'd be pretty big. <laughs> Wait a minute. Big man on Mulberry Street? Rebels and Misfits. Oh. Yeah, Rebels oh. and Misfits. Wow. Nicely done. Now, here's what I tried to do. And a rebel. Yeah. I, I tried to do this, but I don't have the editing skill. <laughs> I wanted to take a Misfit toy and put it in a scene with Rebel Wilson, but I couldn't do it. Well... It don't, feels like it wouldn't have helped me, <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> misfit and a rebel. Yeah. Thought about misfit being in that song. What a great old timey word. Yep. What? A, yeah. It really is. It is. It's like a ne'er do well. <laughs> yeah, you're right. A <laughs> ragamuffin. A you know a street urchin. Ah. <laughs> uh. You uh, probably have some trivia for me. I bet you do. I, I have uh, uh, options for you. Okay. A straight up trivia question, or I have the other half of the list from last week, which is uh, every male name in a Billy Joel song. I think we'd enjoy that better. So let's do that. Every male name in a Billy Joel okay, song. Let me see if I can tell you how many there are first. There are 23. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm not going to get that. That's great. Um, let, let me, oh, I got to get my pen so I can mark them off as you get them. All right. And so, how many will I be impressed by? I'll be impressed if you get 12. All right, cool. Um, I, Eddie. I know you without impressing me. Yeah, well, actually, I do care because I like you. Um, and? Eddie. Hell yeah. Um, Johnny Ray, wait, what the hell? Man, most of them are probably in We Didn't Start the Fire. Um, John, Johnny Ray? Nope, you're thinking of that Paul Simon song. Okay, um, uh, <laughs> Red, great Johnny Ray. Yeah, Red China. There's because there's gotta be oh, some. Johnny. Oh, I have a Johnny here, I'll yeah. give you that. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have last names. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh, well, yeah, because there's going to be a Ray in that uh, Ray Charles in the baby grand because he calls him Ray in that. That's um, I think so, but I don't think it's in the lyrics. It's just him trying to be bluesy. <laughs> um, let's see. Man, if, are you going to be less impressed if I only get one? <laughs> you, got, you got two. Yeah, you might want to check out uh, Piano Man has some names in it. Oh, John at the bar is a friend of mine. Yeah, talking to Davey, who's still in the Navy. Yep. Right, probably will be for a while. Isn't that how it goes? Yeah, for, for a while. <laughs> oh, wow. Drinks for me. Bill. Bill. Bill, I believe this is killing me. As the yeah, smile no. ran away from his face. Um, Somebody at the bar is a friend of mine. Yeah. Well, didn't we say that? Um, John at the bar is a friend of mine. No. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's somebody who's no longer a friend of yours. Oh, Paul at the bar is a friend <laughs> of mine. <laughs> a little inside baseball for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some easter eggs all right um all right let's oh, do it yeah. he works at the grocery store yeah now i'm blanking like a motherfucker just saying uh, see how it feels yeah 
<laughs> I had too many Negronis. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, Anthony works at the grocery Anthony store. Anthony works, at, yeah. Uh, and uh, this freezing thing is fun. <laughs> um, there's a Russian guy from Leningrad. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God, Billy the Kid. Billy. Billy the Kid. Yeah. Right, who I believe was a fella. Yeah, there's the guy from Christy Lee. Yeah, I don't know. Or Joe. Joe, God. One who's a straight up fucking song title of the song we did. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're always friends. Jim? James. 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 Your um, me. fucking name. Yep, <laughs> James, that's right. Uh, Bobby, which I now can't remember what that's from. <laughs> uh, Charlie. Don't know what that's from. Don't know what that's from either. Little G. Uh, <laughs> keeping the faith or something, right? It's from a uh, half a mile away. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Midas. I'm sure there's just a reference to the Midas touch, right? I would think. Yeah. Victor. Victor is our Russian friend from Leningrad. Okay. The clown. The, oh, um, yeah, Pagliacci. <laughs> no, Victor. Victor the clown. Victor the clown. Oh, okay. I thought Pagliacci yeah, was somewhere. I'm putting you out of your misery. That was all of them. Wow. Yeah. Are you all right? I am bad at trivia. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard with male names. I mean, Bobby and Billy and Joe. Yeah. Not as fun as uh, Eliza. And Christy Lee. And, and Diane. <laughs> yeah. And Brenda. Yeah, it's, yeah. All of those trivias is, is if the answer was one name, I'd be good because I'd get Brenda and I'd get Eddie. Yeah. And I have nailed it. <laughs> Do you know how many female names are in any of Billy Joel's songs? One, Brenda. That would be great. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, female name just does sound like a lady's in you on Long Island. Oh, God, yes. They absolutely Anne, were. Elaine, Judy, Eliza. It's his mom's uh, bridge club. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would you like to go back to the harbor? Sure, let's do it. Um, I try, it's so funny when you look at Cold Spring Harbor, you're like, I can't remember which of these songs is which, because they all stink so hard. I don't think we've done You Look So Good To Me. We have not. I think I know what it's about. About a lady. About a lady, uh, and then he'll be sad that the lady doesn't like him. Right. Very, very likely. It would be nice if the song, yeah, it'll. It's very likely to be about a girl who is even unaware that he feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> Just completely. Okay. Yeah. The absolute opposite of this song it'll be a song about how it is her fault that she doesn't know he thinks she's pretty <laughs> uh, now I have to sneak peek the lyrics just uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't see any rain but I think we got the rest of it yeah pretty much <laughs> tune in next week yeah tune in next week and we'll hey and we'll fix our Wi-Fi Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to see what I can do. <laughs>